Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, who is the person or thing on the other side of a mysterious phone line? Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Yes, it is. And 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Of course, uh, you can also write in your story on our website at realghoststoriesonline.com. And if you like our show and you'd like to binge away on quite literally what would take several months to get through if you were to listen to every single episode back to back to back to back to back, uh, you can binge away on the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories. Go to uh, our site, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. When you become a supporter, you get access to all of that, including our EPP bonus episodes, brand new ones every single week for you. Uh, the archive, advanced episodes, all of it's ad free. So that's another big perk. If you don't like ads and all that, I get it, but it kind of is what pays our bills. Uh, but if you want to do the $5 a month, you can say goodbye to ads forever. And uh, in exchange for that, you get all of that stuff and then some. So ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Tony and Carol with you on today's episode. Hi. Hi, Tony. How are you today? I'm doing great. And yourself? Fine. Thank you. That's wonderful. Um, today is the day in my state that everything kind of got lifted with the mask thing. And I know that this airs like weeks uh, about a from month right from now. now. This will be airing yeah. about June 16th. We're recording this on the 17th of May. Okay. month. So a month ago. Yep. But it's so weird. You and I were talking about it earlier um, that I have this kind of like, it's like a security thing or something. Yeah, it is. With it, I feel weird. Like I tried going in a place that it was masks are suggested was mm -hmm. on their sign and nobody it's the convenience store. Nobody ever wears them in there. Sure. Not even the people who work there and they haven't for weeks. And so today I tried it and it was too weird. I was like, I don't know. And I'm fully vaccinated. Sure. I don't know what my problem is. But the crazy thing is, is I went to work and today they like passed out a new thing about masks and mm -hmm. you can go without it. Yeah. And there's some restrictions. I have worked there since last July, and today was the first time I saw some people's whole faces. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Isn't that weird? Yeah, like it's like one day on a Zoom meeting, um, because but I've seen them like on Zoom, but I've never actually seen them in person, even though we're in the same office. Like staff meetings are all on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And so there, I worked with a guy for a while, and I didn't even realize that he had a goatee and a mustache. <laughs> No idea. <laughs> and so today was just kind of weird, like it, talking to people yeah. for real, like not on a screen and seeing their actual faces. It is. I'm ready for it. I, I, I'm it's I I don't know why we you know feel this way, but we do. I mean, it's conditioning. It's because I think I'm going to die. Yeah. I mean, it, and it's I'm going to keep doing mine because I am fully vaccinated, but they still haven't gotten down to kids yet. Right. So have I have an eight year old who still is wearing her mask and I'm going to just keep doing it so I can do it with her and <laughs> she doesn't I feel weird about it. Um, but I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm happy that we're here. I, I hope it doesn't backfire that we didn't that we're doing this too quickly. I don't know the answer to it. Um, I'm just going to kind of keep then doesn't matter what I say. Anyhow, I, and I don't think it matters because you know, the science seems to keep changing all the time. Right. So and that's how science works. I'm not saying that that's wrong. Science keeps changing because that's what science does. But it's just like, I don't know what they're going to say next week or next month or this or that. So I'm just going to kind of live in the moment. <laughs> And if they're saying, yeah. okay, we don't have to do this. If I'm not with my daughter, I'm going to take it off and enjoy breathing again and seeing people and all of that. But I don't know. I mean, it's just, I, I still feel I'm it, it, we're at this one day at a time thing. And maybe, I don't know. It, it's, it's interesting. I was listening to an episode of this American life earlier and Someone had said on there, you know, I've lived through like the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, the zeros, whatever they call that, the teens. And I lived through 2020. 
almost as if 2020, you know, every month was almost its own decade. And it really kind of was I mean, well, in so many ways, because it wasn't even just COVID. It was like just a year chock full of crazy shit. Like, oh, my God. So many of us got fired, you know, yeah. and there was other like my case. My mom had a stroke and I had skin cancer on my freaking lip. Yeah. Don't ever get it there. I'm just saying. Yeah. But it was just like, so there was, and that's just some of it. There was just a year filled with drama. And then add all the, you had a ton of I know. Then add all the political stuff into it too. And all of that that went on. And then. So I think that's why it's my security blanket. It's like, should I live full? It it almost is. If I don't wear it. I know. I mean, I got divorced. I mean, there's just so many things that. Happened. I mean, I moved. We started a farm. I mean, yeah, that's another thing. You and I I both bought new houses. It really, it's like, it was a decade unto itself. Like, you could look back and, like, January, like, they could just dedicate, like, when CNN does, like, their the 2000s or the whatevers, just do 2020. 2020. And you got 12 episodes month by month. month. Exactly. You could do it that way. And the crazy thing is, it's not just you and me. I know so many people who had a year just like that. It was just, Jesus Christ, can it be one more thing? You know, I don't know. But, you know, the good thing is that now. I don't have to wear my mask to the convenience store if I don't want to. We can go and wander around Sam's Club and eat free samples in peace. It's a whole new world. (laughs) Thank you, Peebo. I love that you pull us up so quickly. (laughs) We're having a conversation. See, I know you. We're having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's the back of your mind. You're like, there's a perfect song for you. Of course there is. No Bryson. How I work. Well, the fact that we can even do that now, I'm not like, uh, it used to be you'd have like a stack of CDs by you and you kind of know where shit is and you knew exactly where the track was. And I'm like flipping it in and out of the denims really quick and making that work. that was impressive. Now I can just, boom, push the song and there it is. But yeah. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, No problem. Okay. All righty then. Good old Peebo. Uh, (laughs) 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at uh, Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to uh, first letter. It says, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the phone system called Magellan. It's more commonly a dial tone and ringtone you hear at a school, hospital, or dentist's office. It's basically in places where you have to dial a number each time you want to reach a phone number. This was common before the 90s. But the Magellan ringtone has a certain sound to it. You can probably find a clip of it on YouTube. Now, this is the connection. My friends found a way to call a specific phone on an elevator. It had the Magellan ringtone, and we found out all the calls were free, so a bunch of kids spent time together there. It was out of the cold, people called often, and the elevator existed near Madison, Wisconsin, probably until about 2005. The reason why I think that elevator had the phone installed was because one of the buildings in that area was for older people. I don't know specifically if they made hips or dentures or hearing aids, but a ton of elderly people parked in that lot. So we were extremely polite, on that elevator, but most of the time we used it was late night when the parking lot was empty, party hours and such. Remember all hours, I call that number and someone would pick up. If you were bored late at night and called that number, there would be someone there willing to talk or you got stuck with a busy signal. It was kind of badass how our childhood was, but on with the story. There were some strange calls we got. We got death threats that where they said they knew where we were and they were waiting for us outside. We were spending time together in an elevator. I was 15 or 16 back in 1999. So most of the time I passed the phone to someone more physically threatening. I remember hearing a call with yelling in the background where it simply scared me. I did not know how to react when I hung up. I was wary of going back to that elevator. I went there a few times after because I was a dumb kid. But those were specific times where I remember wanting to leave. It was not until I heard years later, around 2003, when I heard from a friend that a group of girls got raped and one survived. He showed me the news article, and it was one of the first times a guy got busted for calling that number with a cell phone. And that was a specific crime, and I'm glad the guy was caught and went to jail. The strange part was when we took pictures on the elevator. The lighting was fine, but with any Polaroid or those disposable cameras we used back then, it would all develop all black, even with a flash. This is when we called it the Black Elevator, since I was there. 
There was no reason why we could not get a photo on that elevator. I do not think it had anything to do with the lighting effects, but nobody took a picture when they were on the elevator. It was odd when I was there, like something did not want to be captured. The girls would take a picture just to have a memory of the night, but it would end up blank. With the history of the elevator, not the old people, how we spent time together, there were those freezing days called out of boredom. I'm under the impression we unlocked a few things. Not intentionally, it was just kind of creepy, all the history added up. Even before they demolished the elevator, a group of homeless people got crushed inside when they were seeking shelter. There was a crashed vehicle after that where a girl died. Some guy killed himself there and recorded it. Dogs and cats were known to die there. It's nothing to write home about. There was this general area I think we participated in screwing up a paranormal situation, but not too far. I'll admit I drank and smoked a cigarette in that elevator, but that's all I ever did. The elevator is long gone now. Back around 2006, it got flattened and the area became a Target shopping center. And I think where the elevator was is a gas station now. They've only driven by there twice, so my guess is a good as yours. I've not heard of anything happening since 2006, but the area still creeps me out. Thanks for reading. I stayed up late for this story, so I'm tired and apologize for any typos. Go Packers and fuck the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to bed. <laughs> so that made me laugh. Yeah, that's one way to sign off. On that's a that's how they've always signed off on their letters since day uh, one. Of they, that's someone who's submitted to our show since the beginning. Oh, that's funny. Um, so the phone on the elevator. So I'm trying to understand this. They just picks it up and it calls somewhere, or are they just dialing people and kind of prank calling them? I couldn't. I couldn't actually tell because there was times in that story I thought it went one way or the Me other. Me too. Way. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't totally sure, but my God, like horrible things happened on that elevator. Yeah. Which is really strange. It makes you wonder, like you know, like animals dying in it. How did animals die in it? Well, it sounds like it was probably like a kind of a shady area that you know it was an elevator that you really ne didn't necessarily want to be on, or I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't want to be on that. The thing is, I remember doing shit like that because okay, nineteen ninety nine, internet still fairly new. People are using chat rooms and things of that nature to communicate. There is no social media. Phones do not. Phones are still phones, and that's it. You can talk on them, and if you want to accessorize them, there's different colored face plates you can get at the kiosk in the middle of the mall. This is 1999, so if you want to go and have fun or mess around with somebody, you'd have to go find a payphone or something like that. And I would do that all the time. I would. I remember going to the mall with my friends and prank calling people from the payphones at the mall. It was, it was all, super fun. Oh yeah. I, I mean, it was horrible for the people getting the calls, but making them was a blast. I used to call Nintendo a lot because it was a, a toll-free number, so you could, you know, you'd have to put quarter, quarters in the uh, payphone. And I would, it was like their customer service department. And I would just make up the most absurd stories of what was going on with my Nintendo. And they'd always be very much <laughs> like, oh my God, sir, like, is the, is the red light on right? Like, like I... <laughs> There's flames coming out of it right now. I, it's starting to get on the drapes, but I still want to play Super Mario. Um, what is this? Is this part of the game? Is, is Mario? Is this like one of his fireballs? No, sir. You you should get out of the house. Call nine one one. I'm like, it's just a little flame. This is great special effects you guys got there on the Nintendo. You know. And so I just, I'd say all sorts of crazy shit to Nintendo. And they probably have like maybe a greatest hits recording of me. I don't know. But um, that was kind of what I did for fun. <laughs> Between starting to work in radio. <laughs> like, go be a teenager. Which actually is what led to a profession for you. Was well, that. Yeah. And then I started doing it on the air. Um, exactly. Because then I was like, oh, great. Now I got a studio I can do this from, not the payphone at the mall. And yeah, then I would start calling all over the place. And um, I would usually call out of state or into Canada or something. And anything and everything. I, I had horrible, horrible bits. I had one, my, one that stands out the most. I ended up naming my cat after the cat in the bit. It's the cat is stuck in the, um, uh, the, the what is it called on a sink with the, the garbage disposal. Oh, oh, oh. And, and so, like, I have the sound effects in the back of a garbage disposal, like, zzz, and then a cat, and I'm the cat. I'm actually doing the cat sound effect. 
And I'm just trying to talk real calmly to like the Sears repair people about this. And they're like, can, unplug it, unplug it, sir. I'm like, well, I don't know where the plug is. It's just a wire that goes into my cabinetry. Should I just, it, Fluffy, you're going to be okay. And, and, it, oh my God. and it just kept going. Like, you like traumatized someone. <laughs> I they was like, probably still tell this story. See, like, yeah. And then we had a garbage disposal that ate a guy's cat. It was horrific. <laughs> and I heard, I heard it heard all. It. it was there. This is, <laughs> I took the call. I don't even know where he lives. This is what happens when you give a 16 year old an afternoon show on rock radio <laughs> in 1999. So, yeah, that's, that's what I did. <laughs> What's funny is that if you did that now, oh my God, oh you God. would. Your phone would be ringing. I uh, yeah. Somebody be running into the studio. Stop it! That'd be happening if people petitioning outside saying I'm being cruel to animals, or it's like, no, it's a comedy bit. I love animals. I'm not like encouraging this. I'm not glorifying this. I'm not a. It's just a fucking comedy bit. Is all it was. It was. They'd have been waiting for you outside today. To yeah. I'm just telling you. You couldn't do half the shit anymore. I mean, radio wouldn't let you, but. I mean, people would be offended by so many of the pets that I did. And they weren't like racial or anything like that. It was just, it was just weird. It was just like, think of the strangest, weirdest things you could possibly get a phone call about. And I tried to make those calls and then put them on the air. Telemarketers were great fun too. Back when they actually had people that would call when they were telemarketers. And oh God, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta find these calls They're sometime. Horrible. I had a guy, I think I played this on the air once here on this show. I think I found it. I called a mattress store and I was uh, pretending to be a porn director named Jay Steele. And it was like uh, a really good porn director. We're, we're looking for a new uh, a male accomplice for Lexi and the lesbian quintuplets. And they're like, what? And I said, have you ever, um, have you ever done any sort of uh, adult uh, film acting? Well, no. Well, one time. <laughs> That's what the guy no. said. I'm like, oh my God. And I just stay in character. I'm like, okay, well, I'm curious about this mattress because we got to get this replaced, but I need to hear how it sounds. Could you could you take the phone and could you jump on the bed for me? Like what? Literally, I, I just, it, please just jump on the bed for me. And I just want to hear how the mattress sounds when you're jumping on it. The guy fucking does it. Oh. And he, it can hear the springs on the mattress going. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, that's good, that's good. Could you? Ju this is just for, uh, just so I can understand better, and so I can kind of get a little artistic, creative emotions flowing here. Could you make some noises while you're jumping on it, like, uh, you know, not too bad, but you know, like you're enjoying yourself, you know, with someone. And he does it. No. And I, I, this poor guy, he's at a mattress store, jumping on a bed talking to what he thinks is a porn director, making noises like that. <laughs> and now that guy tells all his friends to this day, like a porn director called me when I was working at the mattress store. It was awesome. I auditioned. I don't know whatever happened to him, but... I almost got the part. <laughs> thought he was going to call me back. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was crazy. It was so much fun. <laughs> I miss doing that sometimes. Uh, let's go to a caller here. 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Hi, you are on the air. Hey, guys. I love your show. Um, I just wanted to say that my name's Tyler. I'm calling from Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. And I listen to your show all the time when I go out biking. And I just, I love you guys. You're the best. And you're like literally one of the best ghost story shows and like ghost you know, just like paranormal shows that I've ever listened to. Um, so thank you, like, for one thing, for what you do. Thank you for doing this. It, it really is a great thing to listen to. And uh, you guys are really, really cool. So keep it up. You guys are you guys are awesome. So I had something happen to me, and this is probably the most weird thing that has ever happened to me, and it just happened to me tonight, and I'm still trying to process like what what just happened like you know what i mean like i still i still can't believe it so basically i was uh i was just watching youtube at my house like just you know just sitting there watching youtube um had some snacks and i was just alone right i was just watching youtube 
um, you know, just, just doing that and eating the snacks and, and that kind of stuff. And then I went on my phone and I went on Instagram and I saw that this weird account that I had never seen before started following me. And it liked like every single one of my pictures and like everything. It was trying to get my attention. It was basically an account that was like a spam account that somebody made trying to get my attention. Um, and basically what, what was in this account was kind of weird. So it was someone who made the account trying to get my attention about someone who they knew who had passed away. And to give you some context here, I had no idea who this person was behind the account. And I had no idea who the person that died was. Like, I had no idea who these people were, but somehow they knew me. Um, like in terms of the person that was trying to get my attention about the person who had died, the person who was trying to get my attention knew me. I did not know them. Um, so basically that was that. I just ignored it, right? Because I didn't know what was going on, like why they wanted me to see this person who had died so bad when I had no idea who that person was. Um, so I ignored it and I just kept watching YouTube. You know, I tried to take my mind off it because I thought that was pretty weird. Like they, they just seemed like they were trying to get my attention really bad. Um, and then a couple of hours later after I was watching YouTube, but you know, I was getting ready to come upstairs to go to bed and I stood up and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you right now, I have never felt what I'm about to describe before like I have never felt this before I was standing there um you know just getting my stuff ready and I felt something grab my hand but it did not feel like a person it felt like energy gripping on to my hand and it was the weirdest feeling it did not hurt but it also felt kind of weird like if that makes sense it did not hurt at all but I just knew that whatever was touching me it just felt weird and I, I felt like it shouldn't be touching me. So I started shaking my hand and then it stopped. It was almost as if when I shook my hand, it would, you know, let go or whatever. But then a second later, it grabbed back on and it just felt like it kept attaching itself to me, whatever this energy was. And this is in my basement to give you some context. So I ran up the stairs because I was like, what the hell? And, um, and when I looked down the stairs after I went upstairs, I saw a dark shadow standing there. I'm not kidding. I saw a dark shadow and it, for some reason, it felt like it was a guy standing there. And um, also at this point, I was starting to think, okay, is this the person that died? Like that I saw on Instagram, like as crazy as that sounds, this whole situation took place within a couple of hours, like from where I saw that Instagram account about the person who had died to the point where I feel this energy attaching itself to me and I see this shadow down the stairs after I ran upstairs. And I was thinking, okay, so maybe it is that person because the person who had passed away was also a guy. And for some reason, this shadow that I saw, like just to me, I thought it was a guy or like a male basically. But yeah, this whole situation was just so weird. I hope I explained it okay, like easy to understand. But basically what happened was the Instagram account started following me. It was about this guy who had passed away. I had no idea who they were. Um, not too long after that, you know, they started grabbing on to me. I think it was them or whatever was in my basement started grabbing on to me. And then I ran upstairs and saw the shadow. Uh, the shadow, by the way, was completely black. Like I could not make out anything. Uh, it was just like a black shadow. But yeah, that, that's my story. I don't know what the hell was going on, but I do believe that whatever that was grabbing onto my hand in the basement, since I had never felt that before, I do believe that that may have been the spirit of that person that had passed away on that Instagram account that that whoever was running the account kept trying to get me to notice. And again, I had no idea who the person running the account was or who the person who died was. And this was just a spam account. It was not like a personal account. It was an account that they made up specifically to harass me about noticing this person who had died. So 
I mean, I have no idea who it was that was running the account. I have no idea who the person who died was. And for the first time ever, I felt like something was touching me, like energy, right? Like just after I saw that. And this whole thing just makes me think that that person who died was the person who was touching me and that I saw at the bottom of my stairs. So, yeah, I don't know what to make of it. I hope you guys can maybe give me some advice. Like, I just don't know. And I'm still processing it, right? Like, I still can't believe what just happened. And it, it is really scary to me. And I just had a feeling that, you know, that's what it really was. So thanks so much, guys. Uh, I just wanted to call this in. And I hope I hear it on the show sometime. But thank you for doing what you do. You guys are amazing. And I hope you have a nice day. And I look forward to hearing uh, your advice on this, like what you guys think, because I, I really just want someone's opinion on this because I don't know what to do. So thanks so much, guys. And I'll call you back if I have any updates. All right. Have a nice day. I don't know that there really is anything to do, especially if it all, you know, it, it was kind of, it seemed to be an event that occurred and then it, it sounds like it, it was done. I thought that was weird as hell. Yeah. Like I thought that whole story was crazy. Like I haven't heard anything quite like that. Yeah. Like with the whole Instagram, like I, I guess I haven't heard of some kind of weird supernatural social media thing. Sure. You know, and the fact now that would be creepy enough when you get on because sometimes like I'll open my Instagram page and I'll have like 65 likes on something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sure. And I'll be like, what was so popular? Or, you know, maybe I don't know. However many people get that make them feel popular. Your dog. But, <laughs> right. <laughs> They're all my dog. Yeah. Buddy, I could have. You and I could have our picture taken and we'll get 30 likes. Yep. <laughs> you and me and my dog, <laughs> we'll get 500 likes. Exactly. But um, but you know what I mean? You see a bunch and then you go to see who liked it. And if it's one person liking everything, because that happens every now and again. It's sure. like, whoa, somebody took a deep dive on my page. Mm -hmm. But then when you look, I don't know like how exactly how that worked when he like looked at that page. Maybe that little thing that describes where where mine says this person probably posts too many pictures of her dog. <laughs> um it really says that. Or but maybe it was like some kind of like maybe he's clicking on each photo and figured out that that person had died. Yeah. I don't know. But that's weird. Yeah. And then to have gone back to watching YouTube. So now your mind's a million miles away. It was kind of like, that was weird. Now I'm watching YouTube again. And then after that, the weird thing grabs your hand. Like, I don't know, kind of makes you feel like it is connected in some way. Yeah. I mean, it feels like something was trying to get his attention as to why or what the purpose is. I don't know. And that's, yeah, I mean, it that's just, what we want to figure out. Yeah. But we're not smart enough. I don't know. I know. I don't think I can matlock this one enough to. Um, oh, but I wish we could figure it out. Because that's lock. really that's like a really interesting thing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not your typical ghost story. It's not. But I do want to say, if I I do need to feel good about myself, I'm just going to play the first minute of the call. <laughs> Again. <laughs> he was so kind. He said so many nice things. He was things. so nice. Yeah, yeah was. let's play that again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought like I, I was like I was going to stop the call like, and that's it. That's a, that's the whole call. Thank you and next story. <laughs> I want like that guy to just like every now and again just call and be like, oh. "Hey, you guys, I, don't, I haven't seen you today, but I bet you look good." <laughs> Like, that gets a little weird. I like what I like what you're wearing, even though I can't yeah. tell. Let's do one more call. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, this is Carla from Seattle, Washington. I went to a new, brand new hotel. It had only been open for four days. Um, as I was sleeping, the entry light turned on, and I went to turn it off. It went on again. I got my video camera out and I started to record. And I said, "If you." Um, are trying to get my attention. You have it now. And just tell me what you need. Do you need help? And then uh, I went back to bed. Again, the light went on. I got up, 
got right by the entry light when it was on. Uh, I got a bright orb coming towards me, and I said, I can help you. And then suddenly a big noise behind me, like the chair had moved really bright, loud. I moved my camera around and asking, do you need help? Um, I can help you cross over. And after the review of the video cord, I heard a voice say yes. The last time the light came on, I sat down on the floor and I started talking to the entity. And I said, don't be afraid. You can, um, there's people over on the other side waiting for you. And I said a prayer for them. When I was checking out, the people in front of me uh, was saying, there was something wrong with my entry light. It kept coming off and on. And I kind of snickered behind them. And then um, when I checked out, I said, is there something wrong with the light? And she said, no, it's brand new. I said, okay, well, I know what it is. So that was my um, ghost story that... uh, it's a brand new hotel. It was only open for four days, so I think there's something wrong with the land. But whatever the entity was in my room, I, I helped them cross over. And that's my story. Thank you. Well, wouldn't that be an interesting place to stay? Well, so I like to think I would be that kind of brave and I could do that. I don't know how anyone could be that calm and be able to do that. Just like, and I'm going to do I this would, and do you that. You know me. Yeah. I would be running out of the hotel room at midnight <laughs> and find a new place to stay, Best Western. Exactly. But like, that's just like, that's an incredibly brave person to me. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't do that. But then... You know, does it take someone like that to help that person? Mm -hmm. You know, it's weird that you could die and get stuck, Mm -hmm. that you couldn't do that yourself. You know, when you think about it, it's like if you're dead and you can go to haunt here and there, you know, Mm -hmm. you can move things. How can you not get to where you need to be? Or maybe they just don't see it or know it or something. Yeah. But like, what an incredible gift to have to be able to do that. And to be that in touch with it. Like, that's like, you know, you see somebody who's needing help and you help them, but this is like different. Yeah. (laughs) Like, you know, that, I don't know. That's amazing to me. Thank you for sharing that experience with us. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number. That's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, keep us on the air, become an extra podcast person ghostpodcast.com and go to sign up there or patreon.com slash real ghost stories five dollars a month gets you access to our advanced episodes the archive of episodes the uh, epp bonus episodes ebook audiobook and more again ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories to help keep us on the air follow carol on instagram at carol hughes follow me on instagram and tiktok at tony bruski b-r-u-e-s-k-i until next time for carol i'm tony thanks for listening to real ghost stories online